The two best players from the North American region are facing off against each other in a best of five series of StarCraft 2. In game number one, we find ourselves on the map Raduset, and spawning right here in the top right hand corner, playing with the blue Zerg drones. From Canada, we have Scarlet and her opponent in the opposite corner with the red Protoss pieces. He's from the United States, and he goes by the name of Astrea. This particular series is the upper bracket semi-finals of the American Regionals of the ESL Masters Winter. There you go. Quite a mouthful, but this is an important match for both of these players, so they will be trying their absolute best. Interestingly enough, we find ourselves on Raduset in game number one. Interestingly enough as well, Scarlet is going for a gas into a spawning pool before making a hatchery on the low ground. In the meantime, on the other side of the map, Astrea is going Nexus first after just a single pylon before a gateway. Okay, so right from the start, we have a, a little bit of a different build order philosophy here. So for the longest time, when this map was first introduced, we didn't really see any games on it. But over the last couple of weeks, I feel like in like maybe 50% of the series I've been casting, Raduset Station is one of the maps that was picked. Now, what exactly is the philosophy here from Scarlet, though, on this map? So, in my mind, right, Astrea is a very greedy Protoss player. He's already started mining out the small mineral fields over here, where he can take a very quick third Nexus if he wants to. Astrea is very much so the type of guy who will make a Nexus before the third... Well, he will make a third Nexus, rather, before the three-minute mark on a map where you really can't make a third Nexus that early. And he somehow, some way, seems to be able to make it work. I think he's doing the same thing over here on Raduset, because she got this super early and easy to take third base if you try, right? And this is just a temptation that Astrea can't take. Now, two minutes into the game, we did have the minerals for it. All right, instead we decide to prioritize the cybernetics core here, and are we gonna go for a full wall off, Estrella? Yeah, we are, okay. So he can open this wall back up by destroying the debris over here on the left, but this is definitely gonna be a very quick economy build right here from Estrella. In the meantime though, Scarlet is gone, a hunter gas into metabolic boost, she left the drones in gas, and now a super quick lair. So I think Scarlet is very much so, not playing Protoss versus Zerg, but she's playing the opponent as well as the map. She knows Estrella very well, she's played against him many, many times, and because of that I think she's thinking right now, yo, this, there's no way. There's no way Estrella is not gonna be able to take that, or he's not gonna be taking, rather, that third Nexus super quickly. So I'm gonna try and just abuse this knowledge against him right from the start. So lots of links are coming, in my mind this can really only be a Nidus network opener from Scarlet. Now, she is cutting tons of workers, so... Yeah, we have a natural expansion, but there's no drones over here at all. So, I think this is gonna be... It has to be a Nidus network. Alright, we're already sending a drone for it, and then I guess we're just gonna load queens and zerklings towards the other side of the map. There, indeed, is the network. Come it up. Now, what exactly does Estrella have at this point? He's got a sentry. <laughs> He's got one sentry. I want to believe in the power of the sentry, okay? This guy does a very mean tickle death. He's also going to be able to get a hallucinated phoenix across the map. But I'm a little afraid that what he will see is not going to be to his liking. Loads of Zerklings are already spotted. Drop a Lord here, coming up on the right side. Another Drop a Lord here as well on the left too. Sort of what Bly did against Harstim in that game that they played on this map. So now he sees the Nidus network. Yeah, he saw the lack of drones over at the base. What in the world are you going to be able to do right now? I love the Zorkling edition here. If this was just going to be a Nidus Worm, maybe the probes together with now the Stalker and the Sentry could have helped out. But ultimately, I don't see how this Nidus is going to be stopped. Nah, that's going to be a lot of dead probes. Now keep in mind, this is a complete all-in. It's just that at this point, Estrella has basically got no attacking units. A little early right there on the battery overcharge maybe as well, but ultimately he just wants to bring those, yeah, he wants to bring that energy right over there back to the gateway. Main base is certainly gone. And what was a very greedy economy focus build here from Astrea, I think it's just gotten countered by a very aggressive Zerg rush right here from Scarlet. Clever play though, by Scarlet. I mean, I feel like, I feel like Astrea would do this in a game number one. Like, 10 out of 10 games. There's really no way he's gonna be able to 
withstand the temptation of such an easy to take third nexus. Because he does it on maps where you really shouldn't be able to, right? And then also straight into a Twilight Council too. So no Stargate or anything like this. I mean, if Scarlet would have left Estrella alone, his economy would have been booming. And whatever timing attack he had planned would have hit like an absolute truck. GG is cold. It's Scarlet though who wins game number one. Game number two, we find ourselves on the map Oceanborn. This is a much more standard map, so I don't think Estrella is going to be going for such a quick third Nexus, and I don't think that Scarlet is going to be going for a super quick Nidus network here either. Now, it may be interesting to discuss a little bit as this game really gets started, what a standard map even is. Like, what do we mean whenever we talk about a standard StarCraft 2 map? Well, there's a couple things. So. Many different varieties and different flavors of map design have been tried over the years in StarCraft 2. This game has been around now for 13 years, and it turns out that the most balanced maps, the maps that have a 50% win rate for either race in all of the matchups, usually have a bunch of different features in common. So, for example, in the main base, I mean, for uh, a Zerk, I guess you don't need a lot of space. For the Protoss, though, you do need a, a bunch of room here, and the same can be said for Terran as well, just to build up your infrastructure. Usually, the main base has at least a couple of dark corners that you do have to account for, but generally speaking, it's big enough to plant down a bunch of structures, but not so big that it's got too much dark space, and you can't properly defend against, for example, a Nidus Worm, but also against, like... Medivac drop, war prisms, that sort of thing, right? Then usually there's a ramp that leads down towards the low ground. Ramps in StarCraft 2 usually have these plates or these rocks at the bottom of them, sometimes even on the top as well, I've seen that in the past. And they are there just to make sure that you can't get cheesed by some early game shenanigans. So back in the day before these things were added on, I remember watching games of Terran versus Zerk in particular, where Terran would literally build their first two barracks right over here on the Zerg's side of the map. So they would go for proxy wrecks while rallying marines straight up the high ground. Now you can't do that anymore because you have to destroy these unbuildable rocks. Protoss would do the same thing as well with cannons and all that. It was a little bit dirty and ultimately map makers decided that that is not quite ideal. So there's a ramp that leads down towards the low ground and then usually a wall off over here that can be walled in with three 3x3 three three structures. So that's the standard. Now, Estrella decided to put the pylon over here as part of the wall off, maybe trying to almost like bait a baneling bust out of the opponent here, but you can wall it in relatively easily. Now, some maps are slightly wider than that. Usually, that's considered quite troublesome, and a lot of players, especially Protoss, will not be playing on those maps. Some maps, though, have a little bit of a tighter choke as well, where you can wall it in with like two and a half 3x3 three three structures instead, and that does, yeah, provide a little bit of build order variety. Then as far as third bases go, usually you have two different options in modern StarCraft maps. Now, on Oceanborn, it's this one, I wouldn't say like 9 out of 10 games, maybe even more than that. But generally speaking, you could go ahead and take this one as well. It's just a little bit more exposed and a little bit more in the direction of the opponent. And Basically what I'm saying is that Radu Set Station takes all of those features and throws them out of the window. Well, maybe not all of them, but in general, it's a very different map. And Usually, you would imagine that creates a pretty unbalanced situation for at least one race, right? So say, for example, in Protoss versus Terran, it's Terran who wins like 70% of the time. It seems that despite the fact that Radoset has a very unique layout, it doesn't really, yeah, have any huge imbalances, which is lovely to see. Anyhow. Probe, I think, got sniped over here because this third Nexus is a little bit late. These Zerklings defending at home, basically, by forcing this Oracle to go back towards the third base location of Estrella. But Estrella is going to be able to get that base going here eventually, but not a bad start at all for the Canadian Zerk. Maybe worth noting, by the way, I've already mentioned this in a previous video too, but I guess I'll just repeat myself. I mean, I repeat myself all the time. In reality, I've been making the same video for like five years now, every day. You guys haven't yet noticed? Anyways, um, the upcoming... Actually, I think it's not upcoming, I think it's ongoing right now, but the ongoing map contest is only in the freestyle category. So, Radoset Station, for example, is a map that is from... Ooh, only a single drone, not ideal. It is from the freestyle category. And... Yeah, the upcoming map pool that we'll probably have in StarCraft 2 at some point in the future, or maybe we're gonna only switch out a few maps rather than all of them at the same time, I'm not exactly sure. But there should be more maps, like, for example, Radu said, in the upcoming map pools as well, which 
I'm very excited for. Now that we have nine maps, I think there's a lot more room for experimentation as well. And it seems like the pro gamers are even enjoying it, which is definitely a good sign. Anyhow, standard openers here really from both players. And ultimately, I don't think we can really call this a significant advantage for either player, right? So this has been a standard adept oracle start for the Protoss player. Zerk focusing very heavily on drones here while trying to stay safe with their queens and with their links. And now that all of those drones are produced for, well, I guess three base saturation, that's the moment where Scarlet starts teching up and she starts getting more gas. Roachworn coming together with the plus one melee upgrade. Zorklings try to get a wrap around here on some of these stalkers, but we're gonna need a whole lot more of them if you want to stop these stalkers from killing the fourth base. Getting a kill on this fourth would be really nice for Astraea. This is before Blink is done though, so it's a little bit risky. I was gonna say, uh, yeah. Scarlet at this point doesn't know that Blink isn't done yet, but she's gonna get the wrap around eventually anyways. Where's that second Oracle? It's not over here. I guess it's flying on over? No, that's... Where is the second Oracle? Wow, really? You were sleeping on the job, buddy? Where where were you? You were needed over here. Now Blink finally finishes, but that's still a lot of Stalkers that ended up going down here. Five in total. Eh, a lot of Zerklings were also killed, but I've got a feeling if that's... I, I guess he was using it for base defense, but I've got a feeling that if that, uh, that Oracle joined in a little bit earlier, that fight would have looked a whole lot nicer for the North American Protoss. Anyhow, ultimately, not the end of the world. It just slows down any follow-up aggression a little bit, and... Apparently, though, Australia's like, I guess I'll take this opportunity right now to take a fourth Nexus. So, six minutes and 40-ish seconds on a fourth is definitely nice and quick. Especially, again, if you consider that historically, players would be taking their third base in a Protoss versus Zerg at about the five-minute mark. Now, Australia, well, he took this one like a minute and a half before five minutes. And then the third and the fourth Nexus, nice and quick as a follow-up as well. Anyhow. He's gonna be going into the charge upgrade together with the plus one ground weapons. So a very normal game so far. Heavy focus though by Scarlet on Zerklings in this entire series, right? I mean, 10 Overlords coming up, that's a little extreme. I'm not exactly sure what we want to produce. She is going Bane Links. She is going Road Speed as well. Plus one Missile is coming up before plus two Melee. I wouldn't even mind seeing a second Evolution Chamber to be honest, because she's just going mass Zerklings throughout this series, at least so far. They're a good unit, but against Storm, Archons, Charge Lots, usually not quite the preferred weapon of choice for the Zerg. Although, obviously, that's where the Banelings come in. Maybe not so much against the Archons, but that's where the Roaches once again come in. Okay. Now, I do like this additional Phoenix, not normally what we have. Yeah, it's killed a one Overlord, I guess, so far. Maybe getting a second one here as well momentarily, although apparently he decides to just hang out over there in that corner for the time being. Kind of deters the Zerk as well from going into, for example, Mutas. So I don't really mind seeing it. Now where are we gonna take this game, Scarlet? So she's finishing plus one missile together with Bailing Speed, and she's been making army for ages. 46 additional links coming up. Are we just gonna make 100 Banelings and go? I think that's the plan. This is effectively a, an 80 drone all-in. Which is a bit of a strange thing to say, but this is 32 Banes coming up right now. She's got a massive army. If she catches these Zealots for free, that is not the start you're hoping for. Australia in the meantime was going up north to try and maybe bait the Zerg through this corridor over here, but the swarm has arrived on the other side of the map. Scarlet hitting a banger of a timing attack. There's just nothing available yet. Where's the storm? We have four Templar. They're all with the main army, but Australia completely caught with his pants off. And, or, <laughs> he's completely caught off guard with his pants. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever, doesn't matter. Anyways, these, these storms are gonna have to be on point, and honestly, even if they are, I wonder if the damage has already been done. 29, 30 probes, there are the storms eventually fall, but that is a very expensive exchange. There's a lot more links coming on the back of this too. Roach is now also reinforcing all of this. Can we get some storms? Okay, we do get some nice storms, but this is now on top of Roaches, and as we all know, Roaches don't really care. I think there's enough energy for maybe one storm, but that's about it. Astraea is getting absolutely destroyed so far in this series. GG is cold, and Scarlet wins an easy, at least she made it look easy, an easy game number two. Next up, we find ourselves on the map Alcyone. 
Now, game number one was unfortunate for Astraea, right? He chose the wrong strategy and Scarlet happened to choose the right one. Game number two, though, it has me a little bit concerned. That particular attack from Scarlet was in the making for several minutes and Astraea must have completely missed it. He had no vision of that side of the map at all. And then he was caught with, what what I what did I call it? He was caught with his pants down? Uh, over on the top right hand corner of the map. Like he had no idea, well his army was in the top right hand corner of the map. He had no idea where he should be positioning his force at that point in the game. He's gonna need to tighten things up a little bit, so... It's gonna once again be the exact same start as we saw in the previous game. I fast forwarded through the first two minutes of the match just to hopefully make things a little bit quicker, right? We get to the action just a little bit faster. Mostly because if you have watched the game of StarCraft 2 in the past, you've probably seen this particular start of PvZ at the very least a single time. I I've seen it thousands of times myself at this point, so I personally don't mind fast forwarding until we get to some of the action. Warp gate upgrade coming up right here that allows the protals those warp gates rather than the regular gateways. You can warp in units, okay? Getting a drone is not bad. You can warp in units anywhere that there's pylon power. At the same time, the metabolic boost upgrade is gonna finish up here for Scarlet. That's gonna give those Zerklings their little wings. And suddenly, but right now, we they're super quick. Okay, we're gonna be knocking down the debris over here. Scarlet did take the natural expansion, so this is a triple hatch start here for the Zerg. But maybe she's thinking about taking this as a fourth base here. Wouldn't mind seeing it. Third Nexus coming up at 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Oracle gone across the map. Oracle number one, that is. Second one rallied towards the third base for now in case Zerklings, and they are indeed running across the map, decide to start harassing that location. Oracle sneaking around, going straight into the main base. A little bit of an uncharacteristic mistake right here from Scarlet. I think Astraea could have done something, but not quite achieving it because he was busy microing at home. Okay. We definitely need to see at least a few kills though on these Oracles. If you don't get any damage done whatsoever, you can start falling behind very quickly. Speaking of very quickly though, that is a fast fourth base. It does mean that Scarlet can be a little bit more adventurous with her queens, because queen and jacks are not quite as important when you do have a fourth hatch this early. Okay, three workers is good. Four workers is better. Although I think he probably should have skipped that fourth, just to save some more health right there on that oracle. Blink upgrade once again on the back of this. We'll probably have a forge momentarily too, to go into the plus one ground. Does Astraea know? He does not. At this point, this fourth base here from the Zerg is unscouted. Those golden minerals, well, I say this every time, you don't want to overvalue them. They are important to keep tabs on, because they can definitely increase that Zerg economy very rapidly. Plus one melee coming up here for the Zerg. We've got ourselves the Lair now upgrading as well. Quite a few drones, though. Okay, do get sniped. Yeah, I say quite a few. It's seven here in total. Two as they were transferring towards those golden minerals. I think I like the start here for Astraea a little bit better, but it's really nothing to write home about. Oh, okay. So we're gonna go for an even faster fourth? Is that the plan? Obviously Scarlet can once again bring a ton of aggression towards the other side of the map here. Her economy is gonna be booming. We may just see her go for the exact same attack as we saw in the previous game. Hydra then. Okay. Not quite the same thing. So in this particular instance, we don't even have a Roach Warren. This is Scarlet just relying on Lynx for now, adding on a Hydra List then as well as a Baneling Nest right now. This can be a little bit susceptible to early game aggression from the Protoss, because without a Roach Warren, it can be quite hard to hold, well, for example, Archon based attacks or Zealot based attacks, whatever. If you make a little macro error and you don't inject everything perfectly, you may not have enough larva to be able to produce all of these links. Zorklings now in the meantime though, going up north, and I love this here from Scarlet. <gasps> she had a free pickoff right there on that fourth base, but I don't think she quite realizes it. Alright, Stalkers are gonna get recalled back home together with the Oracles. Good recall, looks like the shield battery is gonna fall. Plus one melee isn't done yet. Scarlet, you need to run. She should not be fighting here. Um, that's a mistake. 
Yeah, that is so many units going down. Lovely control, of course, there by Estrella, but two Zealots. Maybe a Stalker was killed there as well. Maybe it was all three, actually. Shield battery there too for 49 links. Not quite efficient. She had a free pickoff on this fourth base, but she did not see it. So the Zarklings did run by this location, but they must have just barely... Yeah, they're like horses with blinders on, man. They can't see anything. She must have just barely not seen it. All right. Australia manages to stay alive here, but a skid of his teeth, though, because that fourth base is an important one for him. Cutting down some of his units' production here to try and get that fourth base going quickly. There is one rich gas geyser over here, and that's going to provide quite the income. Returning eight gas a trip rather than the conventional four. All right. Storm is going to finish up in about 10 seconds together with charge. Man, that's, that's a bit unlucky, though, for Scarlet. Yeah, here we go again. So this is basically a similar attack, just off of less workers and a bit earlier on into the game. But, I mean, it's once again Ling Bane-based. Storm is going to be really nice here, though. Yeah. Storm? Ugh. Storm? Beautiful. Okay, good Morphin right there as well on these Archons. Yeah, two Banes is not quite going to be enough. Some big storms are landed, though. Okay, Scarlet is gonna try and still break through here. Group Spines is done at this point. There's another storm. Can we make an Archon? We can. Lovely. Beautiful. I mean, it looks nasty right here for Estrella, but it really isn't. There's a lot more counter aggression coming in, I guess. So, or not counter-aggression, it's just Scarlet reinforcing this. I, I think Australia could go for some counter-aggression right now. That was an excellent cleanup. Look at that army size. Oh, that's what you want to see for the Protoss player. Storm is a pretty nice upgrade. Love this little pylon over here as well. This is the Protoss alarm over here. Bzz, bzz, like, it's it's very clear at this point that Astrea, yeah, needed to warp in a couple reinforcing units there. That pylon, giving them the, uh, giving him the alarm here that he needed. The bzz, bzz, alarm? That's not a very good alarm. I mean, that's usually the alarm I wake up with, but... Maybe that's not what the average person does, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, the problem here for Scarlet is that she executed this attack... Yes, with Golden Minerals, yes, with a decent economy, but nothing amazing, right? So she's sitting only at 67 drones right now versus 83 for Astrea. Astrea now taking a fifth base before his opponent. Plus one air weapons coming up. Okay, so he's not going to be taking any chances anymore. I would not mind seeing uh, a unit over there in the wall off, but he's not taking any chances anymore. Yeah, just playing this as safe as possible. Going into the double upgrades, that's the shields together with the plus three ground attacks. I'm assuming we're going to be making a transition towards additional Stargate units here eventually. So I think Estrella could have gone for an attack towards the other side of the map, and I think he would have gone if this was game number one of the series in this particular stage in the match, but... It could backfire, right? So why take a chance? May as well just go for the safest all-round choice, especially when your tournament life here, at least in the upper bracket, is on the line. Scarlet could have been droning here for a while. Instead, she probably anticipated the opponent also attacking at this point in the game. So she decided, nope, I am going to just be making a non-stop army here myself, and... Hopefully, I can take that next upcoming fight on Creep. March of the Overlords over here. Yeah, that Prism. They tried catching it, but it didn't quite happen. Zealot run by over here, also getting caught. Basically, though, what Scarlet is doing here is just aiming for one big attack. Right? She wants to have a fight that lasts for about five seconds, uh, five seconds at most, and... She just wants to collapse on top of all of those Protoss units. And if she manages to do that, I think the fight will probably go in her favor. If Estrella, however, can drag out this game, which seems to be what he's aiming for. There's the Fleet Beacon together with a second Stargate. Plus one air weapons finishing up before we really get to any units that benefit from it. Oracles uh, are spellcasters. They don't actually benefit from the plus one upgrade. 
Yeah, Australia just playing this slow and steady. And you can see this is leading into a bit of a desperate moment right now for Scarlet. Like, what exactly does she do? Well, I think her best bet is just to try and go for another big attack. She's got a lot of money in the bank, I guess. But really nothing to write home about. Look at how expensive this army is compared to the amount of money that she actually has. She wants to go for effectively another all-in here. But Australia doing a phenomenal job holding all of this. Great split right here on the units as well. Walking through his own storm for just a little bit, just for good measure. Stays his ward over here, okay. Another beautiful group of storms over there. One more? Okay, instead we're gonna warp in some Desperation Archons. Still not a bad choice. I think this is about the best fight Scarlet can hope for though. No storms available anymore. Properly upgraded units. I say properly upgraded units, it's only really 1-1 one, one right now for the for the Zerg versus, well, this whole entire array of upgrades here at the bottom of your screen for Protoss. Mava Ship is gonna be available very soon. Carriers are being chronoed out. Plus two air weapons is gonna hit like a truck against Zerg units that do not have any armor research. Yes, yeah, so Scarlet did manage to get that kill, and she did also manage to get the supply lead, but she's still at only 70-ish workers, which is just not quite enough. This is turning into a bit of an awkward game right now, though, for the Canadian Zerg, because she has kind of intended in winning this game several times, and then she's like, okay, if this attack doesn't work, I guess I will die to the counterattack, but then the counterattack never came. So now she's just trying to do more of the same, okay. Quite a few probes have gone down here. Maybe this can equalize things. I still don't like this situation here for Scarlet at all. Nah. Ultimately, right? What Estrella is doing, he's building up very slowly, but he's getting there, to a death bolt. He doesn't want to take any chances, so he decides to play this safe and steady. Carriers are going to be available very soon. There's the mama ship. Mama! Ooh, yeah, there she is. Are we going to use an offensive recall? I mean, that's one of the options. I really don't think we need to. I think we could just group everything together in one big ball and then move across the map. All right, well, apparently we want to go out in this match with style. The only problem right here for Estrella is that there's about 17 overlords on the path. So Scarlet will see this. She doesn't have a spire, as far as I know anyways. Nah, she, she can't really do much about this. There's no vipers available either, so... No recall. Or recall. No abduction, rotter. I think there is going to be a recall. Honestly, just having the mama ship sitting over here... It's such a massive threat that Zerk has to respect it, but there's also nothing that Scarlet can really do about it, so it's actually quite clever. Just parking the, the mama ship over here at the bottom of the map is already going to give Zerk a headache. All right. Big round of zealots, ready to move in. The main army here for the Protoss, really not looking that impressive. But I think the plan is to warp it in over here or maybe into the main base. Zealots here, creating chaos. Protoss army still just dancing on the perimeter here. Yeah, Scarlet sees this coming in from a mile away, but is there really anything she can do? Look at the mama ship. The mama ship base harass. <laughs> zealots trying her best to get some work done over here. GG. Scarlet did not want to give Estrella the satisfaction of warping in his entire army across the map. But Estrella on his tippy toes here in this game, he obtains the victory. Next up, Heart Lead. Curious to see where Scarlet is gonna take this game this time around. Is she once again going to make a thousand Zerk links? Because she's been making tons of links throughout this series so far. It's an interesting follow-up as well, though, from Australia, right? Because there's almost like a bit of an agreement. So, Scarlet went for the Hydrolink Bane all-in off of, like, 60 workers. It didn't really work all too well, and she anticipated a counter-attack from the Protoss. Since that counter-attack counter never came, Australia could have technically gone up against the Zerg, who went all the way up to 90 drones in that game. So, Australia making the assumption that Scarlet made the assumption that because of her attack not working out, that there would be a Protoss counter-attack coming in. There was probably like four or five minutes in that previous game where Scarlet could have made like 30 additional workers and there would have been nothing that Estrella would have done about it. 
So even though that, that was a good game there for Australia, the, the reason why we usually see some retaliation is because you can follow up any sort of Zerg greed that comes afterwards. Anyhow. Ooh, different build here. This time around from Australia. It's gonna be a Robo Bay after a very quick robotics facility. I'm assuming this is gonna be Disruptor Drops. Definitely not the most uh, popular build order overall for Protoss, but it's one of my personal favorites. I always think it's a cool build. You know what? The best thing you can usually do as a Zerg player is, well, make Zerg links. And if I were to make a guess, if it is indeed going to be uh, Disruptor Drops, Scarlet will probably be more than keen to make a whole lot of links once again. Roach Warren at about 350. Pretty quick. Not exactly sure what she's seen at this point that prompted it. I guess she's seen the lack of, well, Stargate. And because of that, she's a little concerned for maybe like a Twilight Council all-in. So probably aiming for like a 345, 350 or so Roach Warren is the safe thing to do. Resaturating the gas. Yeah, sitting at 42 workers and now making non-stop army. She's seen a bunch of adepts here at the front, so this could be Estrella trying to play this off as a Glaived Adept all-in. Warping even more adepts right now as well. Instead, though, it is indeed gonna be Disruptors. No third base here just yet, right? No fourth base yet either, by the way, which is what I always wanted to say there. No fifth base yet either, I know. Quality gameplay, quality commentary. All right, so Estrella really just trying to create a little bit of chaos on the other side of the map. Yeah, now Scarlet knows this is the point where she's like, okay, I guess I'll be making drones instead again. Okay, a couple drones over here would not be painful. No, nah, that would be nice. Good job here by Estrella. Transfusing, I think a drone there? Yeah. Scarlet apparently cares for her drones very deeply. Very dearly, that's probably a better way to say it. Anyways. Oh, we're gonna go for a second prism here instead. Oh, we're gonna go a third prism. Really? No, never mind. Okay, that was a bit weird. So all of this adept shenanigans, though, is delaying the disruptors quite a bit. These disruptors could have been on the other side of the map right now. There's the Gravitic Drive upgrade as well. That's additional movement speed for the Prism. Very nice, especially when you go for some Disruptor Bowling strategies. Thought for a second we were gonna go Triple Prism, though. We kind of sick, but... Looks like we're gonna go four Disruptors instead. Four Disruptors, double Prism speed drops. Okay. Let's see. How much damage can Estrella do? Well, so far, not a whole lot. Good crisis management right there by Scarlet. Probably want to move the Spore Crawler over a little bit, but... Here's the second Warp Prism as well. That's a little funky. Now Double Colossus on the back of this. I love the Double Colossus, because when you think about it, right? Zerklings are good against Disruptors, but Disruptors are really good against Roaches, and Colossi are really good at killing Zerklings. So if the Disruptors force out Zerklings, yeah, you have like a little bit of a triangle, right? Or maybe not a triangle, more like a square. I wasn't very good in, in math in school, okay guys? My geometrical shapes. All I know is the concave. That, that's all I know. And the circle, okay? I will I will be aware of the circle too. No, but it's, it's a clever play right here. From Australia for sure. It's just that this ultimately is becoming a bit of a two-base all-in. And two-base all-ins in 2023 aren't a very popular style to play. And even though Scarlet... Yeah, she's taking damage here. She's already got a booming economy. As long as she makes non-stop army here for the foreseeable future, I think she's gonna be able to hold an attack from Astrea. It's gonna be a scary attack, though. Where's the Immortals? Okay, I was gonna say, we had Immortals. Yeah, okay, they're finishing up right now. Critical here for Astrea to not lose any of these Prisms, obviously. So Scarlet is just making non-stop army. Even opening the front door over here. She's got a guest. Please take off your shoes at the door, Estrella. Let's see. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, one disruptor does fall here eventually, but this is a scary Protoss army. 
No sentries? That's a bit surprising to me. Guardian shields would be very nice. Force fields here would be very nice as well. Instead, we're just gonna go full firepower and yeah. Maybe kill one of the prisms. I mean, normally the prisms are the main priority here, but there's a second one, right? So that makes it a bit tricky. Those disruptors are putting in so much work. Colossus right now, though? Yeah, they're gonna need to be juggled. Disruptors are gonna need to be juggled as well. The problem here for Astrea is that there's too much Zerk economy. So he almost needs to win with this particular fight over here. Now, it's not over yet. That actually turned out to be so much nicer for Astrea there in the end. That looked like it was going desperately south for him for just a moment, but now suddenly it looks like a lot of Protoss units managed to stay alive. Nice Purification Nova over there as well. This is the point in the game where the main base is going to be starting to run low, you know? So he needs to essentially win the match with this, because there's still no third base. Nice Micro. Trying to keep these heavy hitters alive. Yeah, and now suddenly that Zork economy is down to gutter here. Not a whole lot available anymore for Scarlet, although she has made a fourth hatch. And apparently we're gonna continue mining over there for a little bit longer. If you look at the income advantage, this is why Estrella was being so aggressive here. If this went on for another minute, Zerk would be maxed out, right? And then there's really no way you're gonna win with a two base all-in. This is a very long two base all-in, right? Because it's been it's been in the works for a while, to the point where Scarlet probably was starting to scout for proxy next time. Eh? Still not in love with this though. Is there enough for the Zerk? Ah, oh, I guess there's not. No, that Disruptor is forcing so much movement in that Roach army, and when the Roaches are moving, they can't fire. Game number four, it goes in favor of the American. Alrighty! And that takes us to the map Hecate. It's gonna be the rubber match. Momentum has shifted in favor of Astrea just about half an hour ago. Well... He was losing this series 2-0. to zero. Scarlet looked absolutely dominant, especially after game number two. It looked like it was going to be a landslide victory, but right now, there is a chance for the Protoss player to take this entire series. And apparently we're going to try and do so by going for a Twilight Council build. Okay, so different strategies almost every single time, at least in the games that he's won. So that's always nice to see. That previous game, though, was an Estrella game to a T. Like, he plays very greedily, usually, with the quick neck side that he's building all around the map, and then suddenly he whips out the strangest two bays all in I've seen in a while. Is it gonna be Glaive to Depth? I mean, Astrea... I mean, he, he didn't see exactly, right? But it seemed to me like Scarlet knew exactly what she needed to do if that previous game was indeed going to be some sort of Glaive to Depth opener. So she will very soon figure out that this is not a Stargate opener. Is she once again gonna start up a Roach Warren at like 345, 350? Which is like a minute earlier than we normally see it. Okay. I think she did it specifically because of this build. So Glyph to Depths have gained eh, a little bit of popularity again. It's not really a build that ever leaves popularity, I guess. But it's also not really the go-to strategy for most Protoss players out there. I'm assuming now she's figured out that this is not a Stargate opener. But she will be adding on a Roach Warren within the next 10 seconds. Making a prediction. We're gonna resaturate the gas, make a Roach Warren. In five, four, three, two, one. Make me look smart. Yeah, okay. I look smart ish. Thank you, Scarlet. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Ooh, now that's a cheeky one. This is Glaived Adepts into Dark Templar. What I really like to do as Zerk against Glaived Adepts is make a Spine Crawler or two. Spine Crawler over here, Spine Crawler over there. Spore Crawler at about 440. Not usually what we see at the professional level, but I do definitely recommend it if you're a Zerk player on the ladder and you struggle with these builds. Resonating Glaives, it's an attack speed improvement, 40 Adepts. So basically they just fire significantly quicker. They're already very good at, well, killing light units in particular, like, for example, the Zerkling. That's also the reason why Scarlet currently is making Roaches, but Roaches without speed actually struggle quite a bit. Alright, loads of links available. Oh, look, look at the amount of Zerklings. Like, I, I want to know how many Zerklings Scarlet made throughout this series. Literally thousands. She's made so many. Okay. 
Um, my main concern right now for Scarlet is that she does not have detection. So if you want to be protected against any sort of DTs, you need to start spores at about 440. 450, maybe. Australia has gone through a saver, or to a saver location. Yeah, this is gonna be councils over and over and over again. Alright, it's time for some crisis here, Scarlet. We're gonna have to juggle an additional two balls over here. Are we gonna be able to stop the Adept Shades while also dealing with the different Dark Templar? One DT in the main, one over at the third. Adept still shading around, going for the natural expansion. Scarlet not quite on top of it this time around. Not really that many kills though, all things considered. But still, that is a significant amount. Yeah, it's not over yet. And we're gonna do some more Adept Warp-Ins right now over in the main base, fair enough. DT, getting in some more work. Yeah, so 10 workers is not game-ending amounts, but it's more than you're hoping for. So this is an uncommon follow-up. We don't usually see Glaive the Adept into Dark Shrine anymore these days, but it used to be popular. Astraea, once again, throwing a bit of a curveball right here at the opponent. And Doing a good job with it. Okay, so, now we just play a normal macro game, right? So, there's the Robo Bay. Gonna be transitioning towards whatever we like here. Let's try out going into a third Nexus as well. That one is, of course, delayed. One Dark Templar here in the main base, just trying to be annoying. Adept's still not quite done yet. Ah, uh, yeah, we have the Prism nearby, so you may as well just pick up whatever you can. Adept's going to the main base. Queen's over here as well. Scarlet desperately trying to re-drone. There's the lair. Yeah, so off of a one gas, lairless opener, you actually struggle against DT follow-ups quite a bit. <sighs> That's the uh, cyclical nature, I guess, of StarCraft build orders, right? I brought this up recently as well, but... You just don't see certain builds for a long time. That doesn't mean they're not good anymore. That doesn't mean they can't win games anymore, it's just that they've fallen out of favor because the opponents have gotten so good at defending against them. But then apparently if players haven't played against it in a while, they're like, Oh, that particular follow-up, I haven't seen it in months. I guess I don't really have to worry about it anymore, so I'm gonna be cutting out that, that Spore Crawler. Scarlet paying the price here. Obviously a little bit of a gamble for Estrella, because that could have been a... Uh, well, maybe not a wasted Dark Shrine. Ooh, this location over here. Is this good? I don't think this is great for Scarlet. You kind of want to trade out Adept as well. Okay, targeting a few more drones. Lovely. Only targeting with a handful of these Adepts. Getting a few of them out as well. Dark Templar continue... Or, sorry. Not Dark Templar. Adepts continue in the main. How many workers do you think have been killed so far in this game? Have a number in the back of your mind, okay? We're gonna confirm it. I'm gonna say 32. Oh, okay. I was close, though. It's a lot of damage. It piles up over time. And ultimately, Scarlet has still got the supply lead. She's only eight workers behind the opponent, but the real advantage right now that Estrella has is the tech, right? So he's got tech all the way up to tier three units. So there's the Dark Templar. There's the Disruptors. We can go into Colossi. Scarlet is still just barely transitioning away from the early game. So even though this looks pretty playable here for the Zerg, this is still a very significant... Are we at 32 now? Oh, close. Uh, this is still a very significant advantage for the Protoss player. Make no mistake here. Now, obviously, Estrella is going to have a hard time closing this one out. He needs to do another attack here. Instead, we can also decide to play this as a big macro build once again. I think instead what he wants to do is defend whatever attack Scarlet has got prepared. So she's building up. Yep, there's Roach Speed, there's Bane Speed, there's plus one Missile. I think Scarlet is effectively gonna go for a combination of the builds we've seen already throughout this series. Just a ton of Roach, Ravager, Ling, Bane. And try to just, yeah, cross your fingers and hope your opponent is not prepared. This is not a game where we have Dark Templar, or sorry, this is not a game where we have High Templar, rather, with Sionic Storms ready to go. Because we have more Adepts harassing the natural. Instead, this is going to be just a load of Disruptors. Pushing into these high grounds with all of these shield batteries, it's tough. Scarlet right now sees as well what she's up against. I've got a feeling this is going to be a very tough hold. Can we make some Dark Templar? Yeah, or yeah, some, some Archons here. Well, it's a tough hold. 
But I think it's much easier than the Zerk push. <laughs> Battery overcharge being utilized very, very nicely. There's another Purification Nova dealing a ton of damage. GG is cold. And Astrea manages to complete the reverse sweep. After being 2-0 behind against Scarlet, he wins the series 3-2.